Hey, this is Mr. Yu, and today we're going to be doing a review of the states of matter. Um, there are basically four states of matter, but the most common states of matter on Earth are solids, liquids, and gases. So, uh, this is an example of a solid, which is uh, ice water, and this is an example of a liquid, which is liquid water, and uh, this is an example of a gas, which is steam or vapor, water vapor. Now, when we think about solids, liquids, and gases, um, an important thing to think about is the temperature of these things. Uh, when we look at ice, we intuitively know that it's really cold. And when we think of water vapor, we intuitively know that it's... Uh, going to be hot. So what does that exactly mean um, in regards to the states of matter? What does the temperatures mean in regards to the states of matter? So basically, um, colder things are not going to have enough energy or are going to have less energy than hotter things. So in this example, uh, if you look at the molecules in ice water, we're just going to see them vibrating a little bit but they're mostly going to be stationary and not going to be moving around a lot as we move to the hotter molecules of water this is liquid water these guys are going to be moving around and vibrating a little bit so there's going to be a bit of movement here and a bit of vibration now as we move to the the highest energy molecules which are the water vapor or the gas these guys are going to be moving around a lot and vibrating too <clears throat> so the temperature when we talk about the states of matter basically tells us how fast the molecules in this substance are moving. So what are the exactly the temperatures in these uh, solids, liquids, and water vapors? So let's check it out. Solid ice is going to be less than zero degrees. Liquid water is going to be between one degree and 99 degrees. And water vapor or water gas is going to be over 100 degrees. So what does this tell us? It tells us that water molecules are moving faster than ice molecules and water vapor molecules are going to be moving faster than liquid water molecules and cold water molecules I mean uh, ice water molecules so I'll give you a second to copy down these vocabulary words and I'll come back to you in a second so go ahead and pause this video and uh, copy these down So now we're going to take a closer look at the definitions of a solid, liquid, and gas. The first definition we'll be taking a closer look at is the solids. So a solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. Let's just take a look at this example that I have right here. This object is a rectangle, so its shape is a rectangle. and its volume can be calculated. So let's say that it has a height of 5 centimeters and a length of 10 centimeters and also a width of 5 centimeters. To calculate that we have to use the formula 
width times length times height. So if you were to do that, we would get the width of 5 centimeters times the length of 10 centimeters times the height of 5 centimeters. 5 times 10 is 50 times 5 is 250. So you would get 250 centimeters cubed. Now, the particles inside a solid are very closely locked together in position and can only vibrate. So what does that mean? It means that since we talked about how particles inside solids are going to be only vibrating a little bit and they're not going to be moving around much, that means that they're not going to have an opportunity to um, move at all. So they're going to be locked into position. So this molecule that we're looking at right here is an ice molecule. It's a model of an ice molecule. And as you can see, all the all the water molecules are locked into certain positions. And they're not going to be moved around much. As you can see by this model, they just have enough energy to vibrate, but not much much else. So they're going to be kind of stuck in this conformation um, until it gets enough energy to uh, become liquid and that would be by either giving it some uh, energy by heating it up or leaving it outside or something like that. So let's go to the next definition here and that's going to be the definition of a liquid. A liquid has a definite volume but no shape of its own and it takes up the container, uh, it takes the shape of its container. So if you look at this example I have, um, this water holder or container has different shapes and whenever you put the uh, liquid water in there it's going to take up the shape of its container so that's it's pretty basic um, definition of a uh, liquid here so let's go, go on to take a closer look at what the particles inside a liquid is doing so basically the particles inside a liquid have enough energy to vibrate and do a bit of movement do a bit of movement but um, it's not going to have enough energy as much as a gas would so it's going to be able to interact with each other in a limited basis. So they might be able to interact with the molecules just around uh, itself, but it's not going to be able to collide with um, any other molecules that are way uh, beyond its range. All right, let's move on to the definition of a gas. Well, basically a gas can change its volume very easily and it takes up the shape of whatever it's, uh, it's contained in. So in this example I have a, a picture of a, a balloon and once you fill up a balloon with gas it's gonna hit the edges of the balloon so let's just say this is a balloon. It's going to hit the edges and it's going to uh, take up the shape of the balloon and uh, expand the balloon into basically uh, a cylinder shape. And then you can form it into like a, like I have here a picture of a dog. So let's take a look, closer look at the uh, molecules inside a, a balloon, um, a gas. So the molecules inside a gas is going to have a lot of energy. So it's going to have a lot of energy. And it's going to be able to interact with um, other molecules and the container very easily. Because it has enough energy to like 
collide with these far away objects. And that's why it can actually take up the shape of its container very easily. Uh, with gases, they're going to move independently of one another, so they're not going to interact with their neighbors as much. Uh, they're most likely going to um, interact with uh, other molecules that are a bit farther away. They they might do a, a bit of interacting with their neighbors, but most likely the molecules are going to be interacting with uh, farther away molecules. So that is the definition of a gas. And uh, thank you very much. I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.